All right. So when God is about to bless, He will always bring someone in your proximity that has what you need. And you will be able to solve a problem for them. That then will release what they have that you need into your hands. In other words, someone has the blessings that you require. You, in order to get that blessing, must solve a problem for that individual or those people. So the key to blessing is to, to serve. And you serve using your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your resources. It doesn't matter where you are, your station in life, really doesn't matter. What matters is the right time, the right opportunity, the right moment, and God's favor on your life. And you go from one season to the next like that. Let's consider Joseph. He was in prison. Prior to that, he was a slave in Potiphar's house. He went to the maximum with that. He was set over the house of Potiphar. God wanted him to leave there, so he created something that was just uncomfortable. Potiphar's wife started eyeing him up, came after him, and because he removed himself from that scenario, <laughs> adultery, he got blamed for trying to attempt to rape her. She lied. That put him in prison. It should have killed him, but because God's favor was on him, just put him in prison. But he was going closer to his next assignment, which is Pharaoh's house. And when you solve the problem for Pharaoh, you'll get everything you need. So what looked like a setback was actually God planting Joseph within the close proximity to the one that's going to take him above everyone and everything. Not just where he was, but it will affect even his own family that weren't even in the same country. But the gateway to that favor was a prison. Are you seeing this? This is a very deep situation. Please, do not say, well, that was Joseph. That's not me. If you are walking in the fear of the Lord, you're righteous, and you've been in a prison for a long time, meaning you seem to be restricted, you have abilities, gifts, and talents, and it's like it's hemming you in, and you are frustrated because you don't have an outlet for it. Get ready. It's about to show up. And it's about to show up in a big way. Because what God is doing, he's creating a scenario whereby only you can solve that. the problem of someone with the resources you require, the assets that you look for, the capital that you need. Everything you have is in the care of someone that has a problem that only you can solve. Because when God is about to bless, he brings people into your life with those blessings. Just like when the enemy is about to hurt you, and attack you, he uses somebody to do that. So, when a person attacks you, <laughs> God is, is just moving you into your next season. The season of plenty is coming. Look how low Joseph fell. Are you in a low place right now? Look how low Joseph fell. He was a slave, but he was a slave in prison. But because God is with him, he has to come out of prison, the lowest spot, and rule over everybody, including the people that put him there. And even those that are in a far country that were responsible for him being a slave in the first place, they have to come and reconnect with Joseph, and he is now in the position of power 
and they have to now be fed by him. His brothers that put him in the pit, in a well, and it's a good thing it was dry or else he would have drowned. His brothers who put him in there, jealous of his gifts, and he prophesied and, and God gave him a, a snapshot of the future of all of them. They didn't like it. So they wanted to kill him, but they couldn't because God's hand was on Joseph. But they pushed him out of their vicinity, put him in a well. And Judah, wanting to save the man's life, the young man's life, said, let's not kill him. Let's sell him. <laughs> Because he is our brother, we shouldn't have blood on our hands, but let's get him out of the way. All right? So they sold him to Ishmaelites, who eventually sold him into Egypt, and they thought, out of sight, out of mind. That might be for them, but not for God. You could be a derelict in the eyes of people, but if God has his hand on you, you're coming back with a punch that will knock them all out. I'm telling you, this is the season for it. Look at Joseph. Look where he started. The reason why he ended up in, in Egypt in the first place is because his brothers were jealous of his gift. But the gift that people hate you for is the gift that somebody needs in order for them to carry out what they need to do to preserve other people. And they have resources that so much that when they give to you, it changes your life. Your gift will make room for you and place you before great men and women. Now receive this by faith because your, your destiny is upon you. You're about to change. You've got to believe this. This is the year of Jubilee. The bondage of slavery has broken. And it has been broken because of the anointed. you find these words in Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. The yoke is broken because of the anointing. The anointing is manifested in the gift that you possess. And God is about to bring you before people. Hallelujah. Just with what you have will be enough. You've used it in the past. You've used it in a small setting. Well, guess what? It's about to be used in public. And all you have to do is concentrate on how God was using you when it was a few. Because it's the same way that you just have to operate. You don't have to change the way you use your gift. All that changes is the audience. Are you hearing this one? The audience changes, not the gift. <laughs> the gift makes room for you and place you in a big audience where people that have the resources you need are willing to bless you with it because the, the laborer is worthy of their hire. Jesus said that. And when God is blessing you with his gifts through people, receive it. It's your time. Hallelujah. So, Joseph had to be sold into the hands of the Ishmaelites, had to be taken to Egypt, had to be a slave, had to see Potiphar and rule over his house, had to have an accusation made against it. In order for him to go into prison, Pharaoh's prison, in order for God to set it up that the butler and the baker come from Pharaoh's court and Joseph shows himself to be a man with the gift of interpretation of dreams and visions and prophesy therein. These things come to pass and somebody goes upstairs into the court of Pharaoh with that knowledge, though he forgot what God would have caused that person to remember at the right time. And when is that? When the one in charge has a need to be met where none of those that are around him can help him. So they have to get the one that's been in the wilderness, in the prison, forgotten, ostracized, kept aside, put aside, and forgotten about. But God doesn't forget his children and he has a destiny for them. Because all things work together for good to those that love the Lord, to those that are called according to 
His purpose. You're not forgotten, my friend. You are only held in reserve because of such a time as this. God is about to do some things upon the land. And you are right in the smack in the middle of what he intends to do. Because you're coming out of wilderness. God is about to change some things. Hallelujah. And it's abundance is going to be felt by everyone. But you have the gift. Hallelujah. Whomsoever this word is going out to, you have the gift. That will be used to transform your life and the lives of others. And if you come on, coming out of wilderness and things, it looks like everybody's life has gone on beyond yours. And you haven't been getting anywhere. Look at Genesis chapter 41 again and 42. Because what God does is first establishes you. He establishes you. Hallelujah.